Well, hey gang, welcome back to the big board. Let's have a quick chat about the Red Army Destruction of Army Group Center, GDW title, 1984, I believe. A Frank Chadwick design that uh, has a four map layout and it took me a while to work out what was going on with this game that I found to be different. Uh, and, when I, and also when I say it's a, fr a Frank Chadwick design, you know, John Astell uh, had a hand in this as well, but I don't know to what degree. The rules read like Chadwick rules, uh, so I would say it's predominantly Chadwick, but that's just a, an assessment on my part. So coming off the back of Destruction of Army Group Center, the 2010, was it really 2010? That uh, World at War magazine game from, you know, the S&T gang. Um, which were, I think was pretty disappointing. I'm hoping that this will be uh, a little more uh, more interesting, although I can already see that we have a lot of terrain to cover and not many units. So it's a difficult situation historically, and I, I totally understand that and appreciate that situation. Just hoping that, uh, hoping that we can find a game system that kind of allows us to, you know, have a bit of fun with that and make something of a game of it. So uh, by to uh, compare and contrast, <clears throat> I'm going to just take the box off here now. Uh, we've got four maps, and I would say they're, they're not 36 by 24 sized. I can probably look on the back of the box and it'll tell us. And I was a little confused when I laid this out. Like, oh, there's something going on here with this map. What's different about it? What's unusual about it? Well, here's what's unusual about it. Let me, uh, let me zoom in here for you so you can see, right? See how that counter fits entirely in the hex? Uh, he's got a little, little scratch there, but uh, now I've moved him from the hex and I don't know where he goes. Or 302. Yeah, he's out here in the wilderness. I think this might be the wrong spot for him as well. It seems to me that he should be, he'd probably be in Minsk, which is probably where I'm going to pop him. But anyway. The hexes, the hexes are larger, right? So that's kind of cool. So we're now as we look at the map and we look at all the units in it, everything's got a little more space. Everything feels a little more comfortable. It's not that jammed and crammed uh, Third World War experience or you know, even worse, the Europa system. This is just piles and piles of counters and piles and, and, piles, and piles of tiny hexes, right? So uh, <clears throat> we've got a 10 mile per hex scale. We've got four maps to cover the situation it does about 75 maybe 65 percent of what the other game did in terms of terrain coverage so in the south here we have the edge of the marshes we have minsk here in the middle uh heading north and northeast We've got the actual bound, beginnings of the, the boundaries of the battle lines. And I'm looking for another reference point that will give you some sort of clue you in on, on where we're at. <laughs> Here's the terrain chart. I couldn't find the terrain chart. I was looking everywhere. I only saw the back of the, uh, I didn't look on the back of the CRT. Uh, Vilnius here. Grodno there. And basically, that's your, you know, your basic, your basic uh, uh, battle area. So we don't have any of the bay. We don't have Riga. We don't have Konigsberg. Let's assume that if you get off these exit areas here with the red stars, that you're off and, and running and, and causing trouble. Now, uh, what's nice about the way this game is set up, uh, in the back of the rules here, which are, I think, a very sparse nine pages long. Uh, it outlines the First Baltic Front, the Belarusian Front, uh, First, Second, and uh, the, uh, what else? Oh, the, the First, Second, and Third Belarusian Front, and then also where Third Panzer Army was, Fourth Army, Ninth Army, and lays all this out for you so that you can get a feel for uh, you know, what's what and, and where things go. So 35th Corps, 41st here. This is all the 9th Army area. 2nd Army is all located down here along the 
sort of the edge of the marshes and then you've got the kind of the weight of the action may may indeed occur up there uh, with the uh, fourth shock army and six guard we've got to place this dude but we'll, we'll do that in a minute all right so in terms of game system there's actually uh, <coughs> there's actually a reasonable number of similarities between it and the previous game which has tended to make me a tad nervous. Um, so let's uh, let's have a look at those uh, similarities and differences. The I just had to pause the camera a second there. So the sequence of play: we do air allocation and supply. We do a first move, a combat, a reserve move for the opponent, a second move, and a combat. So a similar Similar structure, no reserve move in the previous game. And there's a penalty in this game when you move to combat. There are two combat factors on the units, and they're starkly different. So if we can see, whoa, see here. Of course, if I held it up the right way, that would help. Ooh, that snappy autofocus. Uh, four, eight, two. Two movement points on the right. Uh, if you move to combat, combat factor of four. If you do not move to combat, combat factor of eight. So, big difference there. And you know what? Now I don't know where I had that guy. I will work out where we want him later. That was from the 28th Army over there. <coughs> so, that will make the gameplay reasonably interesting I think for for everybody and uh, the reserve move is a typical a typical construct you might see in OCS where you say you, know, you put a marker I don't know what the markers actually mean uh, they've got some unusual uh, icon there's no icons they're just letters but basically I'm going to turn units sideways to say that they're in reserve they'll be able to move after the first combat is conducted and then uh, in their following turn, they don't get the second move in the in the game cycle. So that's interesting. Air is a little bit different in this game in that both sides have air. Uh, there's a big dis uh, disparity in terms of the, the amount of air uh, both sides have. Uh, you know, the Germans have three air counters. The Russians, I think, have seven or eight. And you can interdict and you can support and you can intercept. Uh, interceptions are only for uh, intercepting interdictions and the net of the interdiction effort versus the uh, versus the intercepts is what's then placed on the board and that's going to add movement points to your supply when you're tracking the counting movement points from the unit to a supply a supply line. Uh, we're not going to get too much into supply and stuff like that. We'll we'll look at that as we go play the game. Uh, then the key difference here probably would be the z uh, zones of control. Zones of control are sticky here. Well, not sticky. You have to stop. Okay, you can leave a zone of control, but you have to stop when you enter one. Uh, the mm -hmm. movement on on roads and all this sort of business mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. Excuse me there. The movement on roads is different here as well. And once again, we won't get into too much of the detail on that. Uh, but uh, spending your entire movement on a road is going to be beneficial. You can move partially on the road. That will be beneficial whether you're motorized or infantry. And uh, combat is, I would say, it's standard odds-based fare with uh, column shifts for terrain and all that sort of fun stuff and air allocations and whether you're isolated or not, as the case may be. And so I think that would probably sum up the game in general, what it's going to come down to now with a much, much larger and more detailed playing area. Area, You know, the last game had no roads, no rail. Here we have rail and roads. And so we'll be looking at, at movement through sw uh, swamp, marshes, forest, clear terrain, rough, Etc. Etc. There's a there's a significant different uh, number and types of terrain that are going to uh, impact uh, the movement rate of units 
in this game and uh, I think limit some of the exploit capability that maybe uh, we didn't see those limitations in uh, in the last uh, last game. All right, I'm gonna uh, let you guys go and we'll uh, go get cranking on turn one and uh, take it on from there. Ciao.